The first game on chess.com was played only 10 days after the first ever iPhone came out. It was played before Stockfish, the chess engine, even existed. But the game was actually really exciting and really educational, so I really wanted to share it with you guys. So let us jump into it. So here we are, boys. Eric, one of the co-founders of chess.com, versus, as far as I can tell, some random guy. He's not affiliated with chess.com in any way. It was just, I guess, early to the website. And the game starts with the Pierce defense, e4, and then we get d6. And this position can really get interesting. Interesting. We of course get d4 and then we get knight to f6 and knight to c3 and now you can play it kind of something similar to a king's indian you will see that it really looks like it but it's not the king's indian or you can play g6 and fia carry your bishop and I actually really really love the way the white played this which is he puts his bishop out black fia and Keros. white puts the queen behind the bishop queen d2 because this battery is really strong and actually white here wants to castle along because now you have a really powerful attack with your pawns black also has an attack with your pawns and these games are just insane crazy full of tactics full of attacking so that's what we get black short castles and white plays f3 for some reason i thought you could just like long castle here the engine is a scumbag and it recommends h3 here which i guess to stop the knight from moving but i guess f3 does that as well so we get f3 in the game we get knight to d7 and we get long castles now and the position is slightly better for white but it's about to get way better for white because we get the first mistake of the game well mistake we get e5 played why is e5 bad well again the engine recommends a few moves here recommends b1 it recommends h3 recommends g4 but i personally really like the move d5 why because it closes up the position this bishop doesn't do anything anymore and this knight has not a lot of squares to go to it can go here and back this knight limits his movement, this pawn limits his movement. The position is really closed and not really good for black because when you have a Fianchetto bishop, you don't really want a closed position, do you? But in the game, we don't get d5, we actually get h4. This looks like an alpha zero stockfish move, just trying to attack, just playing h4 whenever you want. And it's not a terrible move, it still keeps a lot of the advantage, but now black plays kind of a weird move in my opinion. We get b6. Obviously, b6, the point is you want to put the bishop, again, another Fianchetto, another long diagonal. But why? I mean, I think black is just underestimating how good this attack is. And I think this move is just like missing the point. And I think Stockfish agrees because uh, we get immediately g4. Eric just wants to attack. He sees that he can push those pawns. He sees that those pieces have nowhere to go. So he just goes for it. And this is how I would play it, to be honest. h4, g4, h5, just go for it. You have a rook there, you're going to put... Probably another rook there. The queen and the bishop have a battery. It's just a super strong attack. And of course, black fee and cat is the bishop. Completely missing the point. And we get h5. Because why not? You want to attack. h5 makes sense. Queen to e7 though doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. The best explanation I have for queen e7 is... Maybe black in the future wants to take and put a rook behind the queen. And maybe he's hoping that there's some counterplay here. Maybe this pawn disappears somehow. I don't know what that does, I, but I'm pretty sure he wants to put a rook behind the queen. And of course, white here takes. Now, what pawn do you take back with? Do you take with the H pawn or do you take with the F pawn? Well, of course, you want to take with the F pawn. Doesn't matter what Ben Feingold says. Why? Well, because if you take with the G pawn, I mean, just, just look at this. Does this not look scary to you? Does this not look scary to you? I mean, this is total destruction if you let this happen. So, of course, you want to take with the F pawn, which is still pretty bad for you because now there's bishop to c4 check. Now, the best move is probably to block like this. The engine kind of agrees with d5 because now there's some chance to get some pieces of the board. And to be honest, if you play king to h8 and in some positions, this could get really scary. Like, let me show you. This did not happen in the game. But let's say uh, black moves the knight back. Now, you can even sacrifice the rook right because this attack is just so mean bishop blocks you take with the bishop the rook is hanging any bishop move is discovered check the king has almost no squares to go to this is basically mate it says mate in 13 but ain't nobody finding mate in 13 but it's just a super destructive attack you're just dead lost here so you always want to take with the f pawn there just to be safe and that's what we get in the game he takes with the f pawn bishop to c4 check the king actually moves just like i said but we can't sacrifice just yet because uh then the knight could take and that's no good for white but eric here plays the top engine move before the engines were even invented 
and he plays h3. The point of h3, you want to go g5, right? Well, it's black to move, but you want to go g5 because the rook, the knight team up, the bishop guards is just devastation if you can get the knight there. Now, black kind of plays a mistake and he takes on d4, which, yes, it does hit the bishop, but now the bishop takes and now this knight is kind of pinned. You know, if it moves, you can take the bishop and you can remove a defender from the king, which is not really good. Here we get an interesting move, which is knight to e5, attacking the bishop. I thought this was just really bad because I thought you could just take the knights, right? Takes, takes, and you, you just go g5 here and it just looks insanely good. But in the game, Eric actually went back with the bishop, which I thought it was, I don't know, just this, this just doesn't look good to me. Your bishop is staring into pawns. It doesn't limit the king's movement anymore. And this knight is kind of strong here, guarded by the pawn. But whatever, on the next move, <laughs> all of that that I said just, it just goes out the window. My man just reroutes the knight back. And this move kind of makes logical sense because you want to guard g5. You don't want the knight to go to g5, like, at all. But since you took on d4... Now the knight can go to f4. Look at this. Now the threat is not, you know, the rook and the knight teaming up. It is actually just the knight taking on g6. And we will see this in the game because black in this position completely ignores this threat and just puts the rook on the d file. Because in this move, Mr. Eric, the founder of chess.com, uncorks, knight takes g6, check. You cannot take because you're pinned. You're hitting the queen, you're hitting the rook. And this is just, I mean, bro, if, if this happened to me, I would resign and I would stop playing chess for that whole day. But our hero with the black pieces did not really feel like resigning because it was the worst that can happen in a correspondence game. I forgot to mention this is a correspondence game. So this is played like over days, probably and hours. Uh, what was the worst that can happen? I just don't have a queen, right? So uh, not only does the king have to move, you take the queen with check, actually. And now there's many tactics that win here. Uh, the king has to go back, so you could even give this check again and then take the rook. I mean, this is just like resign right here. Mr. Guy with the black pieces did not want to resign after losing his queen. In this position, Eric didn't even go for this which I thought was just completely winning because you, I mean, you want a queen, you're going to win a rook and you can just like even sack a bunch of pieces and checkmate your opponent. So he plays the top engine move again without engines, uh, which is plus 43. And that move is G5 attacking the knight. Let's say you move the knight to E5. Look how beautiful this checkmate is. You have a rook takes H7. If the king takes, you have rook H1. After that, you need to block either with the bishop or with the knight. Let's say you block with the bishop. There's pawn to G6 checkmate guarded by the knight. Bishop cuts this off. The knight cuts this off. What a beautiful checkmate. But that does not happen in the game. Black decides to resign here. Black didn't want to resign after losing a queen. He decided to uh, resign on the move G5. And this is the first game ever played on chess.com, boys. It was played almost 16 years ago. And I think it's amazing how far the website has come, uh, how far chess has come, especially engines on this website. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like it, and maybe watch this video where I played the brand new chess.com bot and I beat it, like, with almost no material. Thank you, boys, for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.